It's grand final. It's a bit of the oval. It's the women's grand final. Something we've been looking forward to. It's the Sandville Statewide Super League Women's Grand Final between the best teams so far during the year, South Adelaide, and they host Norwood, who just won't go away. Norwood's been busy, persistent, and you never know what they're going to bring to this magnificent venue on a superb day. It's Anzac Day, and we'll wait and see as we unfold now this game, starting shortly. Robbie Neal has been, well, a regular with us as a panellist right throughout our coverage, which started at Norlunga back in early February when the temperature was 47 degrees in a car. We took a photo of that, and South were running around getting ready for their season. They deserve right. to be sitting on top of the table, but that means nothing when it's all about the one game, the grand final. Robbie, thank you so much for your outstanding contribution to the promotion of sport. I know you love it, but it's been really a thrill for us to pick your brains and to see just how you think games will unfold. And I'm wondering about your nervous level now as we watch the girls get themselves organised to start this game. Well, Walshie, thanks for having me. And uh, look, I think South Adelaide have certainly been the best team all year with a 9-1 and one record. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep my eye on uh, my four academy girls uh, who are preparing to go away to, to Darwin next month with our, uh, our South Australian under-18 team. So yeah, Nikki Gore, Hannah Munya, uh, Montana McKinnon, McKinnon uh, and Jazlyn Smith will be uh, taking the field today. So really excited about how they're going to go. And look, 193 players have played Sample W footy this year, right? which is which is uh, a fantastic statistic. And you know, and, and new players who didn't play in. Uh, Sample W season one um, have come on and we've seen Rochelle Martin and her sister um, uh, Hannah playing at West Adelaide Chelsea Fiddle as well and you know it, it's been absolutely fantastic to actually see some new players coming in from uh, into our competition that we didn't know about last year both underage uh, from our Sam, from our uh, statewide Super Shield competition at under 15 and under 17 level at Sample Clubs but also the girls from regional areas from other sports entering uh, Sample W uh, season two so it's been wonderful and I'm really looking forward to this contest nor to hardened they played uh, uh, premiers last year and, and got through um, albeit with some some high-end talent that were in their team last year Sophie Lee um, you know Ruth Wallace etc so they're gonna have to do it the hard way I think they just need to, to probably capitalize on uh, their defence, I think, and just make sure that South don't uh, don't score too heavily with uh, you know, Courtney Gum and Co up forward. The defence has been outstanding for Norwood in recent weeks with Rihanna Bush, Whitney Benson, Lisa Jane Millard down there, and of course skipper Rebecca McMahon, Molly Collick. That's not too bad when they all line up. And I should mention too, talking about players that you've been able to scrutinise right throughout the year, we'll be joined at half-time by Madison Bennett, or Maddie Bennett, the injured South Adelaide player. The last time we spoke to her, Robbie, she was on crutches right, and she worked her way up the stairs to say hello to us, which was wonderful. And I spoke to her during the week and she's more than happy to come up and say hello. All right, disappointment, yes, but really behind the team and hoping that they can do the right thing even with her out of the, out of the team. No, I don't think... I think South Adelaide are, are too talented to be able to do that, but Norwood's mindset will be as such that as long as they're in the, in the game and they can take it deep, anything can happen, which is what happened with North Adelaide. I mean, to kick 2-6 to 1-4. Tough conditions, though, with a, with a cross breeze, but they'll be looking to take the, you know, the game as, as deep as they can um, and to perhaps you know, create some anxiety... Um, with you know perhaps the, the lack of scoring from from south if they can apply that that pressure
Jason to add that I think this is the biggest crowd of any match so far this year. A lot of stayed after the previous game, the Maccas League game. It's a big crowd, and this is exactly what is so richly deserved. The way in which these teams have put themselves in, as you said, 193 players all year. It comes down to this afternoon now, a sunny day, and for Norwood to win, they've got to kick more than one goal. Absolutely, you know, and the girls deserve it too, Walshy. They deserve these conditions. They deserve, you know, a, a, an audience to, to, you know, to put on a, a display of uh, of, of Sample W footy. And last year, the grand final ended up being the best game of the of the competition. It was absolutely fantastic. And a surprise and too. Absolutely, it was, and um, you know, and it was it was fantastic. And it was there was some good scoring, some really good play, and. Uh, you know, Nord will be chewing at the bit to, to get at South Adelaide and, you know, it'll be interesting to see how South respond after two and a half weeks of waiting to get here. And we wait now to see how it all unfolds. Peter Walsh and Robbie Neal, I reckon it'll be South by a fair margin. And Robbie, you think? Oh, I think so too. They've been the best team and uh, I think they've got the ability to score and, and put uh, too much offensive pressure on Nord. Let's see what happens. McKendrick won the first tap for South in towards the half-forward line. Norwood's defence in the last few weeks has been outstanding. They were so good against North last week. Credit was there to Benson down back. Bush running all the time and McMahon who crept forward and kicked a goal but she was busy and they have to get on the scoreboard early. Benson's tackled off the ball there for Norwood. Cutting goes in, tries to drag the ball away and can't do so. And we'll concentrate on calling because there's so many bits and pieces to throw out to our audience about players who've come from different sports and now are involved here and talking to a few of them beforehand they're saying they've never been as nervous as this one because it's not a sport where you can go and do the right thing just by yourself it's a team sport now the Hollock's got a hand pass and there's a push and there'll be a free kick for Norwood push in the back and Benson will climb to the feet and she will clear in defence. No breeze, do you think, Robbie, out there? No, it didn't seem to be that way in the in the men's match either, uh, Walshy. So I think it'd be be really even. You can you can score at both ends. I reckon it'll be actually will be fine. So um, no, conditions are absolutely fantastic for the players. And uh, it's uh, worthy of such a magnificent day because we had uh, an absolute shocker last week with the breeze <laughs> blowing us all over the place. But it's okay now, and we're going to see uh, out there Hatchard. For South, in towards the half-forward line, clears the pack. Cutting can't take the marks. He's taken high. Umpire watches closely, and it'll be let's do it again. And already the congestion. Just to see whether or not Norwood's ploy is to clog up the defensive zone. That might be the way to go. Ball on the ground. Breaking clear is Hatchard, who's only been in the team the last couple of weeks and has played pretty well. And there's a free kick to Norwood for a, a well for holding the ball for too long. And Hatchard. A very busy player, a very classy outfit. Absolutely, and a, and a, a Crows listed player as well in AFLW with a lot of experience there. She's very strong inside, she's very clean, and she can see things on the outside, so she'll be really important for distributing the footy. Yeah, she's got Gum as one of her best mates, and then Gore. So those three players, in effect, and then you've got Munyard, who, when she got crunched a few weeks ago, I thought her ribs were gone, but she's up and at them, and she is so speedy. She is, and uh, she's very, very athletic, and she's still a bottom major. She's still got next year to go with our state under-18 program, so we're very excited about the prospects of Hannah. That was a good knock there by McKendrick, but didn't go to the right post. Back to centre wing, Norwood on the run. Good clearance there, running free is Hollock. Hollock in towards the half-forward line, in defence to mark taken by Huddleston for South. Now, Huddleston, you would suggest that there uh, is an acre of land, and she kicks... Very, very cleverly towards centre wing, but it clears the pack. Rushing back is Campbell. Does well on the left boot. Campbell wobbles the kick back from where it came. That's Williams. She won't get near the ball. In there goes Gallagher. Norwood with numbers in the middle of the pack, although the, the ball is flicked out well to Gore. Gore towards half forward. Buchanan. Buchanan. Long kick. Down towards full forward. It bounces towards the boundary line and will be trickled over for a throw in. I think we're going to call. No, there's a last touch decision. Nikki Gore will get a few of the possession. She's very busy, isn't she? She is. And she's uh, she's such a team-oriented player, Nikki. She runs really hard. She's an, an AFL Academy Level 2 member. Um, and I went over to Geelong actually a couple of weeks ago and was able to spend a bit of time with the group over there. And, um, you know, for her to be part of that, she's in some illustrious company and some a lot of girls who are going to play AFLW footy from that uh, Well, she got the ball group. cleared. And there was a snap which was off the side of the boot. That snap coming there off the boot of Courtney Gum, another very experienced campaigner. It's out on the full 
And so with quarters going 17 minutes, four minutes gone in the first quarter, no score. This is the Sandful Statewide Super League Grand Final. And we're going to have the ball thrown back in and we're going to have McMahon down there. I think he's going to finish up with it. Pretty warm out there too. Yeah, it is for, for the players, especially with some of the weather we've had during the week. But Nord are probably looking to keep the ball as skinny as they can, Walshie, mm -hmm. and, and in amongst some traffic. So South find it really hard to get it out, get it on the outside, which is a, what Chrissy Steen really wants uh, to happen defensively, yep. the ball to get out, change lanes, get it to the other side of the oval to actually get it into you know, a thoroughfare to be able to, to attack, attack forward and, and spread the defence. So Nord will be just wanting numbers around the ball and hold out for as many minutes as they can. Good play by O'Day then earlier on for her efforts at the ball, but Bush does the clearing. Picked up and kicked longer towards full forward by Williams for South. Top of the square, and again it's Bush who clears towards the half-back line. Norwood with a, a packed defence, back towards that player who's had a couple of kicks in the, the last few minutes, Caitlin Williams, and she'll get another one because she was buffeted a little bit high. She's been in terrific form too while she, Cat Williams, she's uh, played at Glenelg last year, but she's got really good speed, but she's, a, she's very clean in and she can kick it, she can give some offensive rebound and, and some overlap from defence. She's a very important player. Manged she and the... Hammond are really important. Yes, there's, there's a few of them, all right. There's Hollock. We've got a hand pass out of trouble. Bounces all right to Fitzgerald. Did well. Free kick might be going against Brown, who was tackled. Holding the ball call. And she's a little bit disappointed because busy play down there. And that's, that's the Cheyenne Hammond for... South, who's just waving her hands around and saying, well, come on, give me something to kick to. And that's a poor kick. It bounces to where Fenton rushes out, miscontrol of the ball. Cutting got a hand pass, didn't go too far. Now the hand pass is knocked across to Harvey, who's kicked smothered off the boot. South having plenty of the ball, but not going too far forward as Harvey again goes the hand pass. Gets it across towards Husson. Husson now taken away from her. Good work pushing defence. Now Bush for Norwood, kicks it back to the centre wing. They haven't had the ball over the centre wing yet. Fitzgerald, long and lanky, doing the chasing. Out there is Smith for South. Fitzgerald falls over. Marnyard gets it now to Hassan, who will go with the right boot in towards the forward pocket, but she kicks it poorly, or does she? Not too poorly, because Buchanan's down there. She for South. Kicks inside 50 for the first time. Well done, Benson, in defence. Benson goes to Bush for Norwood. Her quick kick is all right, and Hollick takes the mark, and the defence has held up pretty well so far. They have. They've been, been really, really good, and they've been able to pair off quickly and, and get up and get into the face of the, of the South players who are distributing the ball, so they're not allowing any uncontested possession and, and not allowing South to be able to change lanes and accelerate the game. Marks at half-back for South, and Joe Hills at half-forward lays the tackle. First time Norwood have actually pushed forward, waiting for the ball to perhaps spit out in her direction is Rihanna Peet, who now runs back into the 50-metre arc. She's got some friends back there in Fitzgerald and Hill, so two tools, which will mean that Cutting will contest with the ball in the air. Hollick runs away, is well caught. Umpires letting things go, which is good, as long as they stay consistent. Another fresh start, so seven and a half minutes gone. No score, and I'm reckoning for the first time as Bush comes off, we're going to see Norwood inside 50. Fitzgerald... Wins the tap away, doesn't go too far. It goes in the direction of Hassan, who got rid of it quickly. Kicked there out of defence by McCarthy, around towards the half-forward line. That's all right. Play on's the call in, and a good tackle there for Norwood in defence. That was well done down there by the back pocket player, Whitney Benson. And they're pretty hungry down there, Norwood. Well, Nord are able to sort of generate the free at the moment. Beck McMahon is, is, is playing as the, as the free. So it be interesting to see whether that pans out and whether perhaps, especially at some of those midfield stoppages, whether South actually takes someone out and, and have even numbers forward of the ball to probably give a bit more space around stoppage, but also to have uh, even number contests uh, forward of the footy. Well, Hatchard finished up with the kick towards the half-forward line. Sloppy play down there by McKinnon, not pinged. Some aggression from both teams and there'll be a fresh start. So no score. Quarters go 17 minutes with no time on. So we're halfway through the first quarter of the grand final, the Sandful Statewide Super League Women's Grand Final. And we haven't had a score yet. I haven't had a, a likely score, but in attack now there's a chance for South. But coming out and doing it well in defence 
Uh, there's a, a free kick downfield. That was the, I think it's the skipper down there. It's Pat McMahon, of course. Yeah, and uh, McMahon, who came through very, very strongly, and the free kick further downfield, that's going to go out there to number 21, and that's Leah Cutting. Cutting to half forward, doesn't clear the pack. Good mark down there by uh, Nicole Mark, who will kick towards centre wing. South with plenty of numbers and plenty of the ball, but not a lot of, I think, when they go into their forward line, not a lot of system. It's easy to be critical from up here as Smith has it. Now, Smith goes backwards, and fortunately, Mark had the ball, and the switch is on. Kicks across the ground, and it's where Northcote has it, and this will be the first time it's over on the side where we're broadcasting. And that's not a very, very good kick, although it's done well. Williams, Williams for South, into the middle, and there's Gore, the surfer. Gore's kick oh so good across into the true middle of this ground. Whiteley has it. Whiteley swings the ball wide. Another busy player out there is Hammond. Hammond runs and runs quickly and kicks the ball long in towards the forward pocket. It bounces and will go close to be over the line, or will it? Watching from here, it'll be picked up by McMahon. McMahon's caught! Watching the umpire holding the ball. She tried to break the tackle. A decent sort of a grab, and there's not much you could do about that, is there? No, Nor did really well to actually force South to um, to go slow around here. They were trying to get the, the you know, to accelerate the game and get the, uh, the the extra out the other side, and they did really well. But it was a test Baxter uh, missed tackle, which allowed oh, them yep. then to be able to get through back into the corridor and then use the free and generate the free from that. But they're setting up quite well defensively, Nord. Now that's Molly McKendrick who ran around and tried to cut the angle. She did. But uh, the kick off the boot wasn't smart. It was touched and defenders are doing well. But that's the first score in the grand final in the Sandville Statewide Super League Women's Grand Final. And the side that's only lost one game for the year had that first score on the board. Nearer behind Norwood yet to score. Peter Walsh and uh, Robbie Neal with you. And I mentioned earlier on about live streaming in Australia, bringing all of these games to you right throughout the season which started back in February. Has it gone quick for you the year? Oh absolutely. Uh, end of April. I mean yeah and I'm an Auskick coordinator too for my daughter's Auskick <laughs> Centre and that's starting soon too. And does your daughter know who you are? Uh, yeah she does <laughs> at times and uh, but yeah so that season's coming around quick enough and yep. I thought it was ages away but it's two weeks now. Oh it's good. It's I've good. down the days or anything. <laughs> good work. Joe Hill marks at half back for Norwood. Joe of course Played for Australia, which you've heard this many times, but I don't mind saying it. In the 2000 Olympics, Australia won silver. Wonderful sports person, the ball off the boot of Hill, back towards the centre of the ground. Hollick's the target, knocked away from her by Buchanan. Buchanan for South, got rid of it neatly. Hand pass by Hammond was good. Hammond kept on running, breaks clear, 30 from goal, full forward, touched off hands and rolls through for a behind South. Surging forward in the last few minutes, but the result, just the two one-flag results, the two behinds, nor would get to score 12 and a half gone. Hammond's speed's really important there. She's, you know, she's able to do it, especially when she goes to half-back and be able to, between the arcs, be able to accelerate the game. But even going at goal, um, her turn of speed's going to be a real worry. Pick into play. Now, is there to be a Mark Payne? I think the umpire's going to say yes, and that's Montana McKinnon who toe pokes the ball into the centre half forward, clears the pack. Good run from Bush, who got the hand pass further afield. Went towards teammate in Pete. Pete to centre wing, nor would a chance if they can bounce onto the loosing, the loose ball. Free kick for holding. Free kick for holding at centre wing, and Norwood will come into attack. Running through the middle there. Kick by, that's uh, Riley in towards centre half forward, or actually into the middle of the ground here and there. Won't be anybody to knock that out and we'll have a fresh start again. Norwood just got to watch getting sucked into too much of the stoppage. Uh, they're going to find it quite hard to score here. Uh, now they've got a, some good field position. they just got to make sure that they're, they're aware that South don't get two and three behind the footy. They've actually got some even representation to be able to, to, to give them every opportunity to be able to score. OK, let's go with uh, Gore who got it. No, she knocked it on. Hand pass here towards the forward pocket. South a chance. <laughs> Kick along towards full forward, Norwood's numbers there, it's touched off hands. Good work by the skipper back there in Rebecca McKinnon, and it's a behind. So South are three behinds, and Norwood are yet to score. Robbie. 
to them. A little bit like they are a chance there to cause some consternation, but I'd say Norwood's defence holding firm. They haven't been they haven't been scored against in terms of a goal. So, well, as I said, every minute that South aren't scoring, it's creating a little bit of anxiety for them too, Walshy. So, uh, this is a this is a real win for Norwood at the moment, just to be able to take it as deep as they can into each quarter. Um, yeah, narrow it into to each quarter's effort, and just making sure that they. Yeah, they don't leak goals um, consecutively, especially in clumps. Uh, in defence, if you like the style of this player, Ebony O'Day, takes it from half back towards the centre. It clears the pack. Hill will kick to where? Is there anybody home? She is pinged for holding the ball. Couldn't quite get the hand pass out. And because that was the problem, the free kick will go to Northcote in defence. And there's plenty of forward movement. Here's an injury on the far side of the oval. I think that's a south player over there. Uh, let me see. Looks like a leg injury. Now, we're seeing number 14 going over there. That's Molly McKendrick. Just to have a look at what the problem is with the teammate over there. Oh, that's Hammond. Oh, well, well, we're seeing the trainers sure. coming from everywhere. Can't see a number. No, she's lying on the back now. She's one of these smallish South players. Now she's getting to her feet. And you'll hear, I think, a round of applause. And they're going to carry her from the ground and take the weight off her legs. And she'll come from the far side of the ground. So I would presume we would just have to wait and see what the setup is. Yeah, it's Hammond. Is it Hammond? Oh, we were talking about how busy she was and about the amount of her play that she had produced so far, and now she's coming from the ground. She's got the footy now. Well, she's busy, isn't she? <laughs> she doesn't want to come off. I don't think she wanted it, but <laughs> she ended up being the free one, and, and Hatchard had to go to her. Well, the ball is back towards centre wing. In goes Christy Harvey. Couldn't knock it away. Neatly gathered there by Anne Hatchard. Hatchard back towards Hammond, who just doesn't want to come off. Kicks towards centre half forward. Bush rushes out, misses the mark. Will come back and gather possession. And there will be a free kick for holding the ball. So it'll be a free kick to Norwood. They will be joined at quarter time by the Minister for the Shadow Minister for Sport and Rec and Status of Women and the member for Rainella. That'll be during the quarter time break here at this venue with 16 and a half minutes having elapsed and just three behinds being scored all by South in this grand final. And they hold sway at the moment. And uh, really, Norwood haven't had the ball past, I'll, I'll be honest, really past centre? No, it's, it's certainly been either down south end, or south end or certainly between the arcs. But they'll be uh, hanging out here. And the siren will be going very, very shortly. And I think they'll take that. And uh, south up by three points here at quarter time. But, uh, yeah, the longer they can take it deeper, Walshie, I think they'll be, they'll be happy to make it a scrap, whereas yeah, south will want to be able to score and, and, and assert their dominance. Well, it's quarter time. South Adelaide three behind. Norwood yet to score. This is the Sandfall statewide Super League grand final. South are favourites at three behind for Norwood. Coming in as the underdogs, but that doesn't really matter. They haven't scored so far. Only three behinds in that first quarter of action. And I think the Shadow Minister for Sport now is uh, with us down on the boundary line. I had the pleasure of the company of the Shadow Minister at the start of the year. It's extraordinary now. Here we are at the end of the year, and you're only five metres away from terra firma. What a bold season it's been for women's football. It's been absolutely a brilliant season for women's football. This competition just keeps growing. It's fantastic to see so many people here this afternoon, um, here to support, here to watch the women. It's just absolutely brilliant. It's a really exciting day for women's football, and it's been a wonderful season. Now, Robbie Neal, who sits beside me, has been our expert on many occasions, and Robbie pointed out 193 players have taken part in this season. 
Which is absolutely brilliant. And I think the other great thing now here in South Australia, we have the pathway for girls and women who want to follow their football dreams from uh, playing for their school to playing for their local club to playing uh, in the Sandfall and all the way to the AFL. And that is just going to mean that more and more girls and women can follow their footy dreams uh, and do whatever they want to achieve in football. Has it surprised you about the growth? Let's forget about what's happening on the national scene. Let's talk about our own backyard, about what's happening in this super competition with a couple of new teams and some really spirited competition. Yeah, I think the growth has been absolutely fantastic and full credit to the Sandfall for what they've done with women's footy. As I said before, I think um, that the more that girls and women can see that they can follow those football dreams, the more you'll get girls and women coming out to play footy. And there's some fantastic statistics about the growth of local clubs with local teams. I think uh, the stats were there were about 16 teams, a couple of 16 clubs with girls and women's teams a couple of years ago. And now, now it's somewhere around 82, which speaks volumes also for what local clubs out there are doing uh, with and for girls and women in footy as well. Very kind of you to take some time to have a chat to us. I know you're busy. I know you want a barrack. I know you're close to the boundary lines. Thank you so much for having a chat to us and all the best for the rest of today. Thank you so season. much. It's really, really lovely to join you. Thank you. That's the uh, Shadow Minister for Sport on the boundary line, who was at the function at the start of the year at the Adelaide. Oval, where we introduced all of those that were involved with a couple of new teams and she was very effusive about what was going to happen and if you had a crystal ball, she's not too far wrong. No, she, she's a lovely lady Katrina, she's, her heart's in the, in the right spot, for, especially for us and for women's sport, especially for footy and uh, there's been some very generous um, funding towards women's football. Um, in South Australia and you know, we've been able to take advantage of, of Katrine's uh, generosity and, uh, and be able to, to put some, some important employees in, in uh, important places to, to ensure that uh, you know, the girls uh, of South Australia have um, every opportunity of entering the elite player pathway and going on to play the Sanford W at senior level or, or AFLW uh, at the highest level. South Adelaide three behind at quarter time, Norwood yet to score. The injured player Cheyenne Hammond got up and ran away from being treated. And how's this for a stat? That's part one of the story. Part two of the story is 12 possessions in the first quarter. And she had two of them. Possessions. Well, she had two of them when she was half dead and uh, on the far <laughs> side and actually didn't want the ball. So it just kept following her. Pretty uh, outstanding and large wins throughout the season. About to start the second term. I was trying to pick up one of the players coming off for South, and I'm not sure whether it was Hammond. It's too hard for us to see because they bury themselves in the dugout down there, and I'm just looking around to see if uh, I can pick up Hammond, who might be on the ground, because she's the one that's picked up those 12 despair. She's there. She's about 10 metres away from where the ball is, and she's about to run she's in, in now. She's in the shadow. Yeah, she is too. <laughs> and she's just about to get a touch. Yes, she has. No, she hasn't. She puts the body in, and it gets buffeted away with a good hip and shoulder. So she won't pick up the ball, but 12 disposals in a quarter of football that goes 17 minutes. That's not bad. Well, absolutely. And as I said, if she, once she gets the ball under her arm, they really need her outside run. So, and Norwood have got to limit that. If they get on the outside south, uh, it's going to be re they're going to be really hard to contain. O'Day, long to full forward. It bounces. Hill rushes back. Nice little nudge. It bounces over the boundary line. That was all right. It was all fair. And Norwood in attack for... Well, this is as close as they've got to go. Uh, it's the last touch rule, so South will clear, but Norwood at least getting a sniff of what it might be like if they can grab some ball down there and put some pressure on the South defence, which hasn't had much pressure all year. Kick towards the half-back line. Hatchard tried to claim the mark from in front for South. Not paid. Hand pass comes out of the pack. There's McMahon. Gets around one tackle. Kick deep in towards the forward pocket. Clears the pack. Who's going to gather in defence? Uh, I'll tell you what. South can run and can also get in a bit of trouble for holding a ball. And that, I thought Mr Umpire was perhaps, yeah, a little bit disappointing for Norwood. I reckon they did all the hard things, but it wasn't the payment for holding the ball as Bush is taken to the ground. And then a slap on the head for Williams. Doesn't go unnoticed and rushing through. There's our little friend, number 29, in Hammond, towards half forward. Clears the pack. Chance now for Gum. Gum 
Gets it across towards her teammate in row from Muldura. Oh, well marked in defence. The kick in towards the centre half back position. That was fine work down there by McMahon's friend. And that is O'Day. O'Day's kick back into the middle. Fitzgerald marks for Norwood. Hand pass, not all that smart. Won't result in a holding the ball call. Coming in from behind was McKendrick for South. And there'll be a let start again. They're pushing off the ball. Christy Harvey. Not very happy there as we see cutting. Almost got it, lost it. Hand pass was all right. Ball thrown on the boot by Lisa Jane Millard to the centre wing. Good gather, Reed. Reed's kicked a half forward. Is it going to bounce clear? You just get that feeling that the crowd is on Norwood's side. But South doing well in defence. It's picked up by Nicole Mark. Bombs the ball back towards the centre wing position. Out there is Buchanan. Took time. Had a kick. Norwood with numbers. Oh, bad bounce there for cutting. Really not favoured by the bounce at all. It just gets flicked back out. Here's Hammond for South. Into the middle. Back it goes to Buchanan for South. In towards the half forward line. Row for South. A lot of South movements. And that kick to half forward is good. And it's marked by Williams. A bit of noise from the crowd too. Three and a half gone in the term. Three behind South. Norwood yet to score. Peter Walsh and Robbie Neal. Kick. In the world's full forward. The hand pass by... That was a Mensal who's got the orange boots on. Now it's McCarthy on the left. Boots a full forward. Good mark out there. And Hatchar who took the grab. But surely too far out from there, Robbie Neal. Well, she can kick it. And that's one thing she can do. And um, she'll be every chance. She'll, she'll probably need probably, you know, her best uh, effort for this one. But it was all hard work. Probably not a lot of method from South Adelaide. But um, this might be the one that um, is required to sort of break the ice. Gives it plenty. Gives it plenty. It's a goal. It's cleared the pack. It's a goal. It just hung. It kept on going and didn't clear the fingertips by much. But that is such an important goal. It's been an arm wrestle for the first quarter and a bit. Five gone second term. And Anne Hatchard, a long kick, made the distance. 1-3-9 South, nor would get to score. Well, hopefully that uh, kills a little bit of anxiety that South have had. Uh, going into that, it's been really hard work. Norwood's tackling's been really good. Uh, even when South look like they're getting it on the outside and they're running and they're bouncing, Norwood are pressing up and, and taking down away time and space. So uh, they've just got to keep hanging in here, Norwood, just to make sure that yeah, South don't get two and three in a row and, and get on a run. Gore heard you and says, I think we can, towards half fours. Harvey, tackle, taking the ground, a fresh start. Just how impressive a player is Anna Hatchard with her stats and what she's done and where she's going in her football life. Well, she's still a very young player, and I think she's still only 20. 21. She, yeah, mm -hmm. 21. She was in the, the State Under-18 Academy only a, a couple of years back. So um, yeah, she's had some really good experience uh, playing with Adelaide, and, yeah, she's a she's the type of player that the others like playing with. Easy to coach? Um, I didn't have her. Obviously, I was still in the boys' program at Nord at the time, but um, no, she's a character. I know Bill Economy speaks of her fondly. So, uh, no, she's a she's a terrific competitor of the way she plays, and um, she's very, very um, she's smart. You can see her on the spread now. She's um, demanding the footy, and I think it'll go through her now. Dangerous signs for Norwood, even though there's only been one goal scored that was a long kick from Hatchard. You just think South starting to move the ball with precision and creating a bit of loose uh, space up on that forward line. Creeping down into the forward line. Williams now too far out to score. Now, who's up there to take the big mark? The 25. Oh, that is so, so painful. I was looking to see who was in the square. What happened there? Well, I think the, the player on the mark was still one or two metres over and wasn't coming back. So uh, the umpire, it, it signalled, come back, come back, and was a bit slow in uh, uh, to that instruction. So the umpire said, come back uh, 25 instead. So, mm. Well, Elise Housen was the player who had the shot at goal and dragged it across her body. So it's 1-4 south. Norwood, repeating when these two sides have met, during the year, they've only kicked one goal in the two games that they've played. They're going to have to kick more than one to win this game. And it's South 
in control. The ball kicked to a congested pack over the back, almost a Northcote mark. Climbs in, jumps in hard. There's a bit of World Championship wrestling going on down there. And they all get themselves sorted. The ball will be tossed in the air. 19 there for South Adelaide. There's Montana McKinnon. Can't get the ball away. Leah Cutting is there. She throws herself in at the contest. Oh, she's a very, very strong player. And they are in. They are having a crack in there. There's a bit of push and shove. It's a grand final. So you want to be vigorous. And that's what's happening here. No big pardons. Ball tossed in the air again. Cutting tries to knock it away. Can't do so. Off it goes to McKinnon. Her kick smothered for South. Two step over toe holes here. This is like Jack Little. <laughs> Remember him with the World Championship Wrestling yes, Call? <laughs> absolutely. Well, well, South have got two set up behind the ball. They've got Northcott and uh, Jaslyn Smith uh, free at the moment. There's one Nord free uh, in around uh, this congested area here, and they've got a free behind the ball in Beck McMahon. So it's going to be very hard for Nord to score with this, this set up here at the moment. Um, South are... are well controlled and well positioned in their defensive setup um, around this stoppage. Yes, they are. There was Hatchard off. Got it across towards Munyard. Munyard, you are gone, my friend. Munyard, a vice like tackle from Cassie Tumbrus. And Munyard was off. The Tumbrus was waiting. I think she could see Beck McMahon actually rolling back deep as the deep drop off uh, goalkeeper. So um, she. Sort of got in two minds to keep bouncing or, the, or to, to draw the, the defender and, and give a, um, uh, a draw and give handball. But um, at least I liked the way that Hannah actually saw that there was a free deep. Yep. Just kicking the ball back to the opposition wasn't the right way to go. So um, that was okay. Well, Williams had it and hung on to it for an eternity. And uh, Norwood would get out of trouble, albeit temporarily, because away we go again, in towards full forward, offline and through for... Another behind, some blasts going on from down there. That was again Hatchard. And South at 1-5-11. Norwood yet to score. Nine minutes gone in this term. And with a little bit of hope and with the fingers crossed, Madison Bennett will join us during the break at halftime. With South leading by 11 points, but only one goal and five behinds. Cutting! Hand pass all right towards halfback. Fitzgerald did well. Knocked the ball across towards teammate Bacta. His Fenton crashes into her own teammate. And there'll be a boundary throw in front of the, so the Norwood lads down there. And, of course, headed by a coach in Steve Simons. Boundary throw in. Gore rushes back on off the interchange. Clears the pack. This is scrambly at the moment. It's just hard to see where Norwood are going to be able to find something up for. They just are being blocked out by some very shrewd work in defence by the South team. Well, they're not going to score with two free um, behind the footy for South, so um, they may need to have a, a bit of a think about yeah, how many they actually want around stoppage here um, and how many they want in front of the ball, depending on, on what they want to do. I think if they want to score, they probably need to even the numbers up in forward, forward of the ball so they can actually go to a contest. And it's now official, Robbie. It is official that Leah Cutting doesn't like Christy Harvey. That's official. I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> Here we go from half back. Premiership teammates last year. <laughs> yeah, well, they're not happy with each months. other now. Oh, that's right. Monique Hollick to half forward. Clears the pack. Can Fitzgerald go back and do something out of the ordinary? Oh, too many South defenders there. Or is there. Fitzgerald does well. Flicks the ball to Hill. Which he taken high? Hill dragged to the ground. Umpire said it is a holding the ball call. Just tried to get through and couldn't. And so... It'll be uh, Whiteley there who clears for South back towards Gore who is on the ground again at the 11-minute mark of this term. South 1-5-11 in the grand final. Norwood yet to score. And they've had a chance early on in this quarter for a score, but not quite. Now the kick from Benson back towards centre wing. And it bounces before Vic Ruckman over there in Fitzgerald can get there. And uh, we'll have a fresh start. Nord need to be able to develop some, some run from behind the kicker. So, especially on those hell ball situations, some players coming from behind the kicker, some people who play in defence, just run past, drop into holes so they can actually um, be able to, to put some pressure on, on South's defence. At the moment, it's very stagnant. They stand lateral and they don't make any ground up the oval. Good mark in defence there from Tumbrus. Like her style. Kicks to centre wing. Gore got a shove in the back. 
shove and a half. Yeah. From Hill. She's throwing her weight around Joe. Mm -hmm. She's getting, uh, she's right into it. She's, I think she's a bit unhappy about something. And uh, she's, yeah, she's been involved in, in some physical, physical clashes mm. in this quarter. Now Gore goes the short pass. Now lumbering out there was McKendrick who gets there after the ball bounced clear of her. Tries to knock it forward to cutting. No one can gather over there. It's a scrambly old affair. And with 12 and a half gone in this second quarter, South 1-5-11. Hatchard, the goal scorer. And Norwood not scored. Ball in the air. Well, it's 3v5 ahead of the footy for Norwood at the mm. moment. So it's going to be very, very hard for them to score from this situation. Now there's a change. Sprinting on is Rihanna P2. Gold last week. And she now rushes on to the ground as we have a chance for South in the middle to be marked there by McCarthy. McCarthy plays on quickly, wobbles the ball forward. Oh, they've got a few loose players up on that half-forward line. Chance there, it's kicked in towards centre half-forward, but good work in defence. That's number 10 out there in the Cole Burns. Back towards centre wing. Fitzgerald has to do the chasing. Whiteley leads in the race for the ball for South. Taps it away, then is caught. Went the hand pass. Gore will pick it up. Gore steadies. They've gone 30 and a half minutes. Kicks along. Numbers are back with Norwood and Hollock takes the mark in defence. Bet McMahon's coming off the over. I don't know where she's got a Ooh, sore yes. ankle. I might need it straight back. This, I think this happened in the uh, prelim final as well, while she. I think she came off. Oh, she's just really, really yeah. upset there. She gets angry, and then I think she ends up sort of coming back on. So it'll be interesting to see what happens out of this. Well, she's very, very angry, and while she's angry, there's a real chance for Gum to knock the ball forward. Kick off the ground as a goal! Kicked off the ground by the Cat! Cat Williams! South get their second, and it's Catwoman! What's a Catwoman doing in the middle of this ground on grand final day, the Sandfall Statewide Super League grand final, and South three minutes before half-time at 2-5-17. Norwood yet to score. Well, that was just fortuitous, and I mean, it hasn't been, it's just been sustained effort by South Adelaide, but once again, we could see it with Hammond before. She provides overlap run from behind the kicker. She'll, she'll you know, work up the oval into space, be on the, the end of handball receives and um, be able to provide some options for the kicker. Norwood seemed to be a bit stagnant and just sort of stay lateral and they don't actually ask any questions of the opposition's defence. Right, let's go with the ball out of the middle. And we're going to see Munyard run clear, but the kick from Munyard is not a good one, and it's marked in defence there by... Oh, who's that back there? That's uh, Bush. Bush's kick was poor, and that's Harvey up the ground. Harvey goes for the kick down the ground. Up goes Gum, takes the mark, does she? I think it'll be paid. It will. She's going to play on. She kicks deep in towards full forward. She didn't have to play on. I think she got ahead of herself there because she was certainly within range, and Norwood player held, and there'll be a free kick in the last line of defence, and I'm reckoning down there that could be Lisa Jane Millard and Samita Ridge for stepping over the mark. 15 and a half gone, 2 5 17 south, Norwood yet to score. And do you think she maybe could have just settled a bit? Yeah, I think um, she probably didn't realise what looked free when she had the footy in her hands. By the time the ball got there, um, Norwood had been able to close in on the receiver there. So probably she could have held that up and just turned it into a slow play. I think Courtney was even probably within distance. She's an, yeah, an amazing yeah. kick for goal, but she probably could have even just slowed it down and then they could have just, just worked a, a little slow play to, uh, to you know, and set Norwood's defenders up to fail there. Now Norwood speaking of trying to attempt to not fail. I have the ball at half forward, but it's hacked away towards where the scoreboard is. Bush rushes in after the ball. Buchanan's there for South. Bush, who's been a busy player right throughout the season, knocks it across towards teammate Benson. Scrambly play at the 16-minute mark. Norwood wouldn't want to leak another goal now as Buchanan tries to crash through the pack. Can't do so. Uh, what we're watching from where we are is it's like a game of 10-pin bowling. The Skittles are the footballers. They are crashing in, doing all the hard work, and cutting does just that. Cutting towards the half-forward line, and it bounces, and will the time run out? Hand pass over the top. Pollock's taken. Free kick. Too high. Play on's the call. He's called play on. The umpire's called play on. And Norwood will go. Was that an error or not? Free kick was called. And I'll tell you what, everybody stopped. Everybody stopped. 
players were looking at the umpire and wondering what was going on, and the umpire just called play on. And that is right on siren time. And if you take the sting or you prick a balloon, that's just what's happened there. Norwood not looking like they were going to kick a goal at any stage of the first half. And all of a sudden, right on siren time, that was Alana Brown, who had the ball and said, I'm going to go for a run. She kept on running and then looked around and said, there's nobody chasing me. I'll keep running. And there's still nobody chasing me. Well, the umpire and signaled it. I'll back up the umpire. Yep. The umpire signaled it and no one reacted. No, so that's, that's a good call. There's, uh, you've got to react. And, you know, in that situation, and, and well done to Alana Brown. She took the situation. There was no break in the ball movement. So it wasn't a case where it was it was stopped, it rolled away and, and all the rest of it, and there was no advantage. She, Nord were able to maintain possession there, and that was um, that was the advantage. The umpire called it. Um, I would have kept going, and uh, and they got the goal. And uh, I suppose that last minute got one out of nothing. How strange! Because we're watching, and I'm seeing the umpire with the motion of the arm, and obviously out there and saying, "Advantage, advantage, keep going." Not keep going, but Alana's saying, "All right." And then Alana's actually had a look over her shoulder. I'm reckoning she's anticipating. There's going to be a tackle. And then in the finish, I'll just keep going. I was watching the clock. And I'm saying, you'd better kick the ball or you'll run out of time. Well, the poise for her to keep going and running, yep. rather than actually kick it from 30 metres out and potentially miss, she went straight up to the line and made, uh, made an absolute uh, certainty of it. And, and well done to the Red Legs for persisting right for the, for the 17 minutes of the quarter. It's half time. 2 5 17 South Adelaide. Norwood, one straight six. Anna Hatchard and Cat Williams, the goal scorers for South Adelaide. And Alana Brown is the goal scorer for Norwood. Now, we've got a fair bit happening joining us on our coverage. Now, who have you spotted down there, Robbie? I think we've got Chelsea Randall down there. Sideline eye, Chelsea Randall. How are you, Chelsea? Oh, G'day, guys. I am dodging balls left, right and centre down here at the moment. <laughs> uh, we're seeing a game where it's tough. It's a tug of war out there. And you just don't know, and particularly Chelsea, when we saw Alana kick that goal right on the siren, it's put a bit of oomph into the game. It certainly has, hasn't it, Peter? I mean, the grandstands were alive when that happened. Alana kicked that goal going into the halftime and really exciting footy that we're seeing out here today. So great atmosphere, beautiful day for footy, and I can't wait to watch the rest of the second half. Chelsea, Robbie Neal up here, and uh, what have you noticed about, uh, I suppose, how both teams are setting up? South seem to have a couple spare behind the footy. They're very hard to penetrate, so that goal was probably a bit fortuitous, I think, afterwards. Can you see Nord being able to, to kick a winning score from here, given South are, are well set up there, and, and Nord probably haven't been able to find that overlap run that South potentially um, show from time to time with their speed? Yeah, look, Chrissy, obviously, coaching style is fantastic. A defensive structure is really exciting to watch and obviously it's difficult for Norwood to kind of crack into that so they're getting a couple of times that that, for, that ball across the halfway line and inside their 50 they're just struggling to get it across because he has just on point as we're talking about it uh, as I said stellar coach and, and uh, it's going to be an exciting rest of the second half. And Chelsea what for you now obviously the end of the AFLW season probably a little bit of R&R &R before um, going into a VFLW season with the NT is that right? Yeah exactly right I'm excited. I'm jumping out of my skin at the moment at training sessions. So we play our first match, not this weekend, next weekend, uh, and over in Melbourne uh, for the NT Thunder. Again, another opportunity for some of our Crows girls to play some footy together and uh, continue playing some some quality footy. Chelsea, uh, it's Peter Walsh again. Well, Robbie threw a stat at us at the start of our coverage. 193 players have taken part in this competition in the statewide Super League, women's football, would you have ever envisaged? Now you're at the Peter Motley Oval, it's Anzac Day, and you've got a crowd that are thirsting for more women's football. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I just can't believe how far women's football has come. I mean, a couple of years ago here in South Australia, we had 16 teams. Now we're looking at over 100 girls teams in South Australia, which is just so exciting. And we're seeing young boys, young girls. We're seeing, um, you know, middle-aged parents all, and grandparents all coming down to support the footy on Anzac Day today. So uh, it's brilliant to be a part of here, and um, we'll see what the rest of the, what they can do. Yeah. 
Now, you've got to sign your contract before you go because we pay a lot of money to have boundary riders as classy as you. So thank you for having a chat thanks, and for Peter. giving of your thoughts. We really appreciate it. Tell no, us thanks, best. guys. Cheers. Appreciate that. Go on, you tells. Some of the really, really important sponsors that have helped them out throughout the year. Electrical and Communications, National Pharmacies and Flurio Milk. So, and she's been spoken to by a couple of the uh, coaching staff. Now she's going to just do a few run-throughs, but she's got tape above and below her right knee. She will be back on, I will guarantee it. <laughs> Sooner rather than later as well. Well, she's like a cage lion. The goal before half-time, the only time that Norwood had scored... And maybe, just maybe, that gives them a bit of warmth. We'll see what happens in the start of this third quarter as Hammond on the right boot towards the half-forward line, overcooked it. Millard rushes back, Bush does well together. Bush for Norwood in towards the half-forward line. She wouldn't be happy with that kick because it's straight down the throat there of Smith in defence. Now Smith seizes the chance. Good crowd here too. I'm looking around. And Smith's going to get it back, but Munyard was out there, but... People staying on from the match that was played earlier on. Uh, Smith goes for the short pass. They're just going to hold possession. Uh, just work out what's going on during the half time. I wonder, Rob, is the ball's now paddled over the line? What would be the message, do you think, from the respective coaches? Would, what about Steve? How would he be, Steve Simons? I think Steve would just be sort of... I don't think he would have probably deviated from what he would have said mm -hmm. pre-game. I think it was just a case of, you know, they've got their goal late, um, stay in the game for as long as we can, you know, mm -hmm. just in, in, you know, enforce the contest and all the rest of it. What I'd like to see Norwood do, though, is actually get some representation forward of the ball to give them a chance to score. Uh, otherwise, with it sort of going as it is at the moment, you know, Stouts stay in front and they win. So on this particular day, they've actually got to be able to throw the dice and actually have some representation forward of the footy. Now, Tumbrus got rid of it. O'Day ran through well. Almost the kick by Gallagher. Wasn't pink for holding the ball. Cutting got it right. That's all right. The kick now in towards full forward. Bounces Millard's down there. Fitzgerald lurks. There are three on two. Three Norwood, two south. They turn and they look at the umpire, who is where? It's holding the ball. Call! Now I'm watching his It's a free kick to Norwood. The last person to get up down there was Lisa Whiteley. And I was watching which umpire. Now, in the left forward pocket, that's where I spotted him. And he did the wind farm. And he's given us the wind farm call. And it is Rihanna Pete to shoot for goal from oh, 20 out, 45 degree angle. Pete comes in. Kicks a goal! <laughs> South, 2-5-17. Norwood. Two straight 12. This is a grand final. We've gone two and a half in the third quarter. And it's starting to boil up all right. Robbie Neal. Well, Steve, as he would have said pre-game, take the game as deep as you can. Stay in it. Uh, because we've seen Norwood kick the last two goals. So, basically, in the last three minutes of play, uh, Norwood have kicked two goals. Yeah, really against the run of play. And But if, if you're within striking distance, those goals mean a lot. So, um, they're able to, to get it, but can they get repeat goals? That's the most important thing. And how will South react to it? Well, South, who held sway for the majority of the first half, and now wrenching the ball clear is Gum, who says, look, I'm going to get this back where it belongs, into our forward line. It clears the pack. Harvey goes in, does the pushing and shoving. Ball bounces clear. Running forward there is Gum. Hand pass comes to Harvey, who followed through. Harvey's kick into the forward pocket, bounces towards the forward line. Picked up, left boot to ball by McKendrick. Almost landed at centre half forward. Not quite. Fitzgerald, get rid of it in a hurry, is the call. He does to Benson for Norwood, whose kick isn't good. And there's another stat for Gum, who's had three in the last 60 seconds. Plays on, or oh, gets around the marker, slams the ball into towards full forward. Hands are up now. I reckon that's I reckon that's a mark to Nicole Evans. Met her mother last week at the football. She was too nervous to watch her daughter play, Annie. <laughs> and she said, I can't watch. So we have to, you're here. <laughs> oh, it does it for all and sundry. Harvey picks it up, bangs it into words, full forward. Off the hands of the pack. Was it touched? It was. It's a behind South 2618. Norwood. 
Two straight 12. I've just checked your roster for next week. Your first game is a draw. We've got to come back. So we might as well stay here. <laughs> oh, oh. A, just say, say nothing. Say nothing. Ball down the ground. It's well marked there by Riley. An interchange player. Plays on. Oh, the kick's not good, but it bounces nicely to Hollock, who got it clear from the opposite number two, and Nicky Gore bounces away. Strong play from both sides. And going in there and setting the example is Leah Cutting. And there will be a toss in the air now. Fitzgerald's rushing down into the forward line. Uh, I reckon Cutting's going to contest. He gets up, wins the tap away. Oh, crunch. There's a head eye tackle. Norwood free kick. And they, gee, they really, really hit back hard. Uh, as Pete, who kicked the last goal, wobbles that one off the side of the boot. In towards half forward. No one can take it. Just waiting for someone to emerge with a football. It bounces loose. Buchanan holding the ball. No. Gets back in for a second effort. Flick the ball in the air. Now the heads are towards Gum. Gum got rid of it quickly. Now it's to Gore. She can't gather. Good work in there by Baxter for Norwood. And there'll be a fresh start. Five and a half minutes gone in this term. And South lead by a goal. There's a one by Alicia Gallagher there. She needed to take it and keep running away from the opposition, away from her goals and, and bring in a, in a runner. But she tried to come back through the traffic and paid the price. Here's Munyard. Went too far, but over the shoulder of the call. Munyard gets to her feet. South bench down there. Very excited. What a season they've had. Kick towards half forward. Floats in the air. Gore will run onto it. Oh, she left it behind. Oh, Leah Cutting went in there and she seemed to dish out a fairly strong tackle and her best mate, Christy Harvey, is telling her that that was uncalled for. Well, they are a little bit friendly, aren't they? I thought that was a free <laughs> kick to Montana McGinn then. She got tackled without it and got flung out of the contest. But the umpire must have had the sun in the eyes oh, while she... Oh, I reckon, yeah. Well, yeah, the western sun is just camping over the, the top of the grandstand there. We'll see what give happens. the benefit of the doubt. Gum. Took it out of the pack, in towards full forward. Benson does well, hand pass. Butch is a good player. Butch a very good player. Gee, there's some depth in that kick, but unfortunately only falling back into the hands of Smith, who turns. Kicks towards the half forward line. Now there's that our little mate out there, Hammond, who will go for the kick in towards the forward pocket. Off the hands of the pack, it goes towards where it'll be taken. And kicked in towards forward pocket by Hatchard off the boot. Not quite. Munyard following on. In towards full forward. It clears the pack. Now, who's got the speed down there? Who has got the speed and perhaps the bounce of the ball? Well uh, defended there by Burns. Burns got rid of it to Fenton. Fenton for Norwood. Back towards the leap from Pete. Couldn't quite take the mark. Falls loose to Northcote. Northcote gave it to Gore. Smothered brilliantly. Good work there by Cutting. Rushed back in, couldn't take it, free kick Norwood. A lot of energy from the crowd coming Norwood's way too. Uh, yeah, it's all sorts of things happening here and it's turning into a real grand final now. Cutting. Goes the short pass, searching for Alana Brown. Over the boundary line, it's touch, throw in the call. And we're going to see the bull, Rebecca McMahon, who's ready to go. He's doing the pointing and saying, for goodness sake, someone pick up Nicky Gore. Throw in, tapped away. That's all right. Goes to the hands of Tumbrus. Hit a half forward. Just stripped of the ball there. Holick, no whistle. Campbell. Fitzgerald should have hand passed. Decided no. Didn't hand pass the ball. Brown rushes in. She lost it. Golden opportunity went missing. Picked up by Whiteley. Whiteley tackled by Holick. Got a kick back towards the centre of the ground. Mark paid to Hammond. No play on the call. Play on is the call. No chance at half forward. Cutting. Tries to crash through the pack. Hand pass over the top. Hill. Hill's left boot to ball. Bounces towards full forward. Racing back there is Mark. Takes the ball and kicks long. And kicks to a geographical spot out there where there are only Norwood players. And the kick is not a good one. There'd be some disappointment there. Busting through the pack. Brilliantly done there by Hatchard. Hatchard runs. Hatchard bounces. Hatchard now stops. Goes back and gets the hand pass on. She spotted Munyard. Munyard flicks the ball wide. It'll come back towards Hatchard. Hatchard throws it on the boot. Three on one. Oh, gun marks brilliantly. That's in a half forward. 55 from goal. What a grab. 
Too far out. Gum. Kicks long towards full forward. Back of the pack. McKendrick, no. Rush back after the ball. Benson's there for Norwood. Can't gather. Umpire watches. He won't give a free kick, I wouldn't think. There'll be a toss in the air. That was What about that play there by Hatchard? Oh, she got involved. Ball tossed in the air. Thumped away. In the defensive area. Racing back there is Pearson, who's on. Good work there. Cutting does all right. Kicks poor mark by Gore. Ten minutes gone in the term. It's a goal of difference. Gore's kick was accurate. Marked by Buchanan. Too far out. Well, Norwood have got almost every player in front of Lauren Buchanan. She's ready to kick this. So she'll probably end up just popping this up top of the square. Well, she didn't make as good a contact as it would have first thought. And Cutting got across and took them up. Well, I, think she, she well, I think she pulled the kick just for yeah, expecting. Yeah. I think it was a set play for Christy Harvey to, to run in on it. But um, it might have been a bit shorter than perhaps she wanted. But um, that was a set play just to give the, the key forward a, a decent run at the footy to fly. Well, the kick by Cutting, who's been a busy player, it goes back towards the centre wing position. And there will be a toss in the air. Ten and a half minutes gone. In this quarter, Rihanna Pete from a free kick goal and South have kicked her behind. 2-6 to two goals. Collision coming up. Fenton does well, lets it go for Bush. Bush floats from half back to centre wing. Fisted forward there by Mark. Didn't try and go the mark. Mark didn't. On the ground, climbing to her feet there was Hassan. Now there is a free kick to Norwood over the shoulder and it goes to uh, Gritty Ebony O'Day. I like her style down there. Yes, and I've noticed Beck McMahon's gone forward as well and she's played a little bit there. Um, it's probably, probably the back half of the season, I reckon, Bolshe. So she's, uh, she's come up with an injury, but she's gone forward to oh. add that a bit of competitiveness um, up there for the centre. Well, she kicked that goal last week. She just worked away inside and took that mark and kicked the goal that put to rest North Adelaide. So she's about the place. It's good to see that she's back on. Ball at centre wing out of sight. What do you like geographically and what the weather's like? There's a bit of breeze coming around, but it's not favouring in the end, do you think, Robbie? No, I don't think so. And it certainly hasn't been that way um, all day, while she. So, look, we're getting to the 12-minute mark now of this, mm. this third quarter. So the game's starting to get deep, as we were talking <laughs> about before. One goal that could... You know, against the, the run of play that we've seen um, happen already, uh, can really blow this game open. South, eight scoring shots to two, but it could be eight scoring shots to three and, and level. Yeah, very true. Now, a chance there for Norwood in defence. What a fine mark from Nicole Burns, and I hope, Annie, you're here today watching. Slides the ball over the top, kept on running to take the give and go, not to be. Kick forward there will be marked by Tumbrus. She will kick long towards full forward. Clears the pack. Rushing back there is Leah Cutting. Can't grab it. There's McMahon who's busy. She's around the pack waiting for it to come out. It doesn't. There'll be a toss in the air. A 12 and a half in the grand final. Sandful Statewide League. Super League. The grand final. The GF. The one that counts. Cutting tries to tap it away. Breaks the pack. Gore was there. Pollock tries to knock it forward. Teams throwing themselves in. Hassan's there. Picked up over the shoulder was Riley. A free kick. Tried to bust through the pack and got tickled around the scone. And if that's the case, well, the umpires have paid. The umpires have been spot on right throughout the day. Anything that deserves to be paid is paid. And nor would the chance now. And through the agency of Sally Riley from 30 metres out. Well, it's in pretty good hands, Sally, so... And this could be it. It could be eight scoring shots to three in dead level if we're successful with this kick. What's going to happen, Sally? Goal! <laughs> Scores are level! Sally Riley, one goal. Norwood, three straight. South Adelaide 2-6, 18, plays 18. What a game. Well, the Nor we've got the Norwood chat going on down there near the interchange fence, but, hey, it's it's getting there. We've got, what, three, under three minutes to go uh, for this quarter. Andy, she is level, and this is working out exactly the way Steve Simons would have wanted it. Out of the middle, 
Gore crashes the pack. Kicks long. South need a goal. And they might get one because Gum comes out and takes the mark. But I'm being unfair. He's too far out to score. She wants someone down the ground to be involved. Mensel's down there with the orange boots. But Gum comes in. And Gum's kicked that a fair way. Oh, that is a monstrous kick in Oregon. Harvey! Harvey has taken the mark. How about that kick? She got plenty of purchase on it. Uh, absolutely fantastic mark. But the, the mark by Christy Harvey, fantastic. Body catch. It's exactly what South wanted uh, in reply to, to Nord's last goal. So, Christy Harvey barrels a big one. South, their first goal since the second quarter, 3 6 24. Norwood, three straight 18. We've gone 15 and a half. We've got a minute and a half left. I don't want any more score now. I want this to be really a setup for us at the start of the last quarter. That was a, a superb mark in that forward pocket. Oh, it was. She's got a vice like grip on the footy, we see, and especially she's so strong. Um, got strong legs and so she's able to protect the, the drop zone of the ball so fantastic grab and um, exactly what Chrissy would have wanted just before three quarter time yes that's very true can we get another score before the final break before the troops are given their instructions for the last time in this season a minute to go we saw a spectacular finish in the second quarter with a late goal for Nor. their first goal here comes Hollick through the middle towards centre half forward marked by Fenton we have 50 seconds of play remaining I wonder if she knows I wonder if she knows she's taking time Fenton out of the middle not too sure what to do kicks towards the half forward line Baxter's out there Baxter goes backwards didn't matter uh, Bush marks at 1630 30 seconds of play remaining before three-quarter time. South lead by a goal. And there is a penalty for over the mark. So this could be a repeat of the last quarter. Nord need to get some numbers inside 50, though. There's a lot of South players, not as many Nord numbers. So they just need to see if they can even up the numbers there. Short pass is on. Hollick got it. Just so they can compete and they don't kick it back to an extra. A bit well, too far out still. So. so another kick to away. Can they work something on slow play here? I don't think there'll be time. I think Pollock will just kick the ball and the siren will go. She's kicked the ball. There needs to be a mark. McMahon's up there. Couldn't get near it. It's three-quarter time. And a mouth-watering final quarter. Lays in front of us, my friends. Norwood, three straight, 18. South Adelaide, 3-6, 24. Uh, that's one heck of a goal. South Adelaide have Hatchard, Williams and Harvey. And Norwood have Alana Brown, Pete and Riley. Jess was an outstanding uh, basketballer for Adelaide Lightning and they won a premiership under the astute guidance of Vicky Volk. Now, Vicky Volk never called Jess Foley Jess. From the <laughs> sideline, she just yell out, Foley! And I thought that was a bit rude, so I said to her one night, what's the story? Oh, we've always said that, so there's no drama. So that's not being rude. I just wanted you to know. But uh, I thought she might have been nicknamed Axel. <laughs> All right. This is, uh, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Lights are on and we're all home. 3624 South, Norwood 3 straight 18. What's going to happen? Oh, I don't know. I think South can hold on. I just think South are able to, to, to score. Um, it's not quite as as labour intensive as it is is for Nord. So Courtney Gum is really important, and they get it into Courtney's Courtney's hand. Uh, you know she's so high quality. Christy Harvey forward of the ball. Nord have got to shut shut it down around the contest and hopefully edge it forward and, and score themselves as they've done three times. In 17 minutes, we'll know who has won the Sandfall Statewide Super League Grand Final for 2018. And the first thing we're going to know is after some indecision there is a free kick and that'll go to south and meter ridge i was waiting for the umpire to give the call and you know, nikki gore's got it but she's going to have to come back and flick the ball back into the middle so south will have the advantage of getting the ball forward in the early seconds of this final quarter and that's anna hatchard who thumps the ball a long way Great mark. Oh, Bush is so good in defence. She's been very busy and drags down the mark in defence. Goal the difference. 
Bush kicks to the run of Hollick. Oh, dropped the mark. She got there first. Then she tumbles and stumbles, tries to flick the ball on. Hand pass comes out towards Fitzgerald. It's flicked back to Hollick, who kept on running. That was good play. Kicks the ball around towards the half forward line. It's a chance for Norwood because they have players on the run. Kick floats in towards half forward. Pete's there. It won't be Pete. Won't be Peter takes the mark Sally down there with Sally Riley. Now she is waiting for players to spread down there, but she's got the ball just on 50, and they used the ball very well there, did Norwood. Hollick was on there. She came back at the kicker. Little back and go lead wasn't used. There's the kick. Edwards full forward. It's Joe Hill down there. Tries to paddle it away. Leah Cuttings there. There Norwood players. Hill flicked it back out. Umpire still says play on. Now it's Harvey in defence court Great by tackle. O'Day. Umpire says, I'll take the ball. It's a good tackle, wasn't it? Fantastic tackle. No, we'll just have to watch out. Um, Red Cat Williams just coming out to this near side of the oval and uh, they just have to watch their switch cover, Nord, and just make sure that South aren't able to exit easily. Riley's kicking towards full forward. No one takes the mark. Someone almost did. Uh, Pete's down there, couldn't grab that. And there will be a scramble on the ball. will be thrown in the air. Norwood deep in attack. South don't want to give away a sloppy free kick around this stoppage, while she. So it happened before. Mm -hmm. Cutting wins the tab. And it goes against oh, no Cutting. Way. It's going to a Molly McKendrick, who has the free kick. Getting a bit gloomy here. McKendrick's kick is marked by a very impressive Tumbrus, who skips back at 50. With some vacant space. You can build a few blocks. <laughs> The flats at the other end. Tumbrus goes the short pass into the forward pocket. That's a good kick and a well marked there by Rihanna Pete. Now Pete who kicked that goal in the second quarter, but she's at 50 on the left boot. Kicks towards full forward and falling into the arms here in defence of Nicole Mark, who will play on. Goes to Gore. South lead by a goal. Three minutes gone. 14 minutes left in the grand final. 14 minutes left in the season of women's football. Bush's tackle is brilliant. It spills over the boundary line. There'll be a throw in. It's got to be like her game, Bush. Yeah, I think uh, Bush is sore at the moment. I think she doesn't that last tackle. Whether it's a, a bit of a corky, no, she's up and going mm -hmm. now. So that's good for the Red Legs. Coming on, Elise Housen for the last, Panthers. Last touch. So Reed's got the footy. So it's a free kick. And there she is. She's appeared from nowhere. Reed's kick floats into Ward half forward. Cutting turned around over the shoulder. I can see the call from here, but the umpire was... It's so, so awkward. And let's be honest, about 10 players around the contest. Where the contest, there might have been a, a player taken high, but it's very difficult for the umpire to see in all sorts of directions. Like there is the case there with an over-the-shoulder call, and Michelle Reed has it for Norwood. As we've gone four minutes of the last quarter, and South still leads. And the kick by Reed in towards full forward. Marked in defence there by Hatchard. Hatchard across the goal face that South are defending. And they've had to defend in this last quarter so far. Short pass. Dangerously close to going out. Fitzgerald rushes in. Lays the tackle. It's flicked over the top. Buchanan did well. South emerged from defence towards the centre wing. Ball swatted out of the pack. Now it's Benson who has it for Norwood. Over the top, the kick in towards half forward, marked by Hollick. Hollick runs on. Hollick's kick will float towards full forward. No one could take the mark. It's 20 metres out from Norwood's goal. They're down by six points. Knocked out of the pack. Cutting was there. Three or four players from either sides. No one can gain possession. Cutting gets back in for a helping hand. There's still a scramble. Umpire letting proceedings go on, and there'll have to be surely a throw in the air. There will be. He let it go then for a while, didn't he? Didn't want any controversial decisions no. happening there, sort of, you know, 25 metres out, directly in front. Cutting, wins the tap, didn't go too far. Hollick has been busy all day, couldn't get it. Cutting goes back in, she's been more than serviceable. She is really playing the game of hers, her life. There'd have to be, Robbie, 10 or a dozen. It's a free kick oh. for holding the ball. And... You just wait when that call is made and it's gone to south across the face of the goal face. Oh, Gores are very, very unlucky, not favoured by the bounce. She was stiff. In goes Reed. 
retaken over the boundary line. No, Gore did well. And her kick will go close to the boundary line. And it's still in. Still in. Picked up there by Millard. Millard kicked towards half forward, towards the boundary line. And over for a throw in. Almost the mark by Nicole Mark. Not to be boundary throw in. Six minutes of agonising stuff oh. here. <laughs> Coaches down there. Doing the very best they can. Now Hollick. Thrown off the ball. Goes back in for a tackle. Oh, Harvey ran straight into a big tackle. And there won't be a free kick. It'll be a toss in the air. Well, the tackling has been absolutely it's ferocious, right. hasn't it? <laughs> There'll be some sore girls after this contest, I'll tell you. Bench is now up. Cheering on. Tap away. Uh, here comes Pete again. We've got a quick toe poke towards the safety of the boundary line. Racing back there is Munyard. Over the top, she goes one way or the other, then lost it. Tries to retrieve it a second effort, can't do so. And the ball will be tossed in the air. After seven minutes, we have a Bo Derrick. We've got the perfect ten. Ten minutes left before the end of the season. Cutting taps it away. South lead by one goal. And they still lead by that margin as Fenton comes on from the interchange bench. And it looks like the skipper might be ready Beck McMahon for one last surge. Yeah, Nord have got a couple behind the footy here. I reckon one of them, maybe Joe Hill, just push forward um, and get dangerous. And uh, anything could happen. A quick kick could come out of the, the condition. They need to try and win it, Nord. Not save it. You know, six points behind. So it would be interesting if Nord were able to get it behind and then perhaps turn it into a seven-point play. Um, with the ball being down there and having this sustained pressure inside 50. Cutting wins the tap, didn't go too far. Racing back there as Backstar for Norwood. And there'll be a fresh start again as Norwood make a change. Rushing on is Alison Ferrell. Still McMahon stands on the boundary line. Now a free kick. Goes to South. South have been a magnificent club right throughout the year. The outstanding work that they've done. Electrical Communications, National Pharmacies and Sponsor uh, and Flurio Milk. See, they've worked really hard at getting their team together as Hollick over the top can't mark for Norwood. It's flicked back out to who? We'll wait and see. Another scramble and the umpire is going to call for it and another toss in the air. This ground, a lot of people earlier on watching the Macca's leg, but there's a lot that have stayed on because this is a grand final and this is a chance now over the top. Uh, for Fenton. Fenton got rid of it quickly. Kicked by Riley in towards half forward. Hollick. Hollick's too far out to score. Or oh, is she? Is she? Kicks in towards full forward. Is there a mark? No mark paid. In defence it'll be picked up by Northcote. Northcote's kick is good. The relieving kick was good. Marked by Hammond. Hammond. Wide towards centre wing. Clears the pack. Bounces towards the boundary line. Not quite out. The gun and run will be required. Well done, South. They kick it forward towards the half-forward line. That was done by Georgia Rowe, the last from Muldura. She did all the good things. Hand pass in defence will go Norwood's way. It'll go towards Campbell. Campbell's kick back to half-back. And South have found some supporters. They've opened the gates and they're pouring in. Are oh, they making a noise? Short pass from Munyard. It's marked by the one who's just come on again, Georgia Rowe. Georgia Rowe. Kick to centre half-forward, holds up, and it fills the gap. And Hollick who's been such a busy contributor, takes another mark, almost 10 minutes gone, no score. Oh, what a mark O'Day, not quite. With the hand pass, a tired Leah cutting. Free kick in the finish O'Day was hung on to after she got rid of the ball, and she'll take it. I reckon they've moved into the stand, the South supporters. Have they or what? O'Day to centre wing. Almost the mark in front, not paid there. Good tackle on McKinnon, who's thrown to the ground. There'll be a fresh start. Ten and a half gone, three six to three goals. Six points the difference, one goal the difference. And your thought is? Oh, I think South I, I think South will probably be looking to keep the ball as close in tight as possible, which probably contradicts the way they, they try to play and get the ball on the outside. But 
given they've got the, the field position at the moment and, and they're in front, they're probably not looking to be too expansive in their play. They're probably trying to keep it narrow um, around a lot of numbers and just make it really hard for Norwood to, to be able to score. Now, Ann Hatchard went backwards. The mark was dropped there by Smith, but they have time to steady and manoeuvre. Huddleston kicks it back towards the half-back line. The ball delivered for South, and it's not going to be delivered too far because Hollick's got it. Hollick's kicked the skipper. McMahon runs, kicks, goals. We have six minutes of play remaining in the grand final and scores are level. South 3-6-24. Norwood, four straight, 24. McMahon kicks the goal. It's as if they've won every player has gone to the super performance of the skipper who drilled a goal, scores a level, and we've got five and a half minutes to go. Cop that! I think Beck McMahon had a full body numbing injection to be able to get back and uh, and take uh, part with Norwood's forward line. Unbelievable. She just settled down, and I kept my eye on her. I didn't watch the footy, because I knew her reaction was going to dictate exactly what happened. He's gone! I'm going to ask this question. Harvey marks a ten and a half forward. What if it is a draw? I don't know if there's extra time. I wouldn't have a clue. Harvey Gum marks. Gum was on the lead. Courtney takes the grab. And oh, it's 40. It's a 40 metre kick. Scores a level 12 and a half gone. Gum kicks. She's got the distance. She's got the goal. South in front by a goal. Gum, you star, drills a goal when needed. South get the response, 4-6-30. Norwood, four straight, 24. The margin, six points. 13 minutes gone, four minutes to go in the grand final. Oh, when the footy lobs up in the hands of quality, while she, that's the, the end result. So, uh, fantastic kick from 40 metres out. Did not deviate. And uh, instant reply by the Panthers. So this is going to be really hard. Norwood are going to have to drag something out again just to get the ball forward. Gore tries to crash a tackle. It scores a level at the end of the game. It's five minutes each way. There won't be a comeback next week. It'll be done and dusted today. 13 and a half gone. South lead by a goal. Cutting tries to bust the pack open. Gets a free kick for being held. Gets to her feet. Nord have got to get some numbers forward to spread forward to even up these numbers to make sure that they can keep the ball down this end of the oval. Kick towards half forward. There'll be a free kick, kick to Norwood. Player being held. Player in perfect position to take the grab and then was... And there'll be meterage. There will be meterage. And this means that Alicia Gallagher... Uh, I can hardly see the around. goals just quietly. I don't know how you're going. <laughs> Oh, I don't think she could make the distance. And she's a little uncertain, so she gives it everything. Into the forward pocket. Oh, gives it everything. And Mark dropped in the forward pocket. Play on to call. Kick off the ground will do. It will do because South get the boot off the ground in towards the back pocket. Players throw their bodies in. And it'll roll towards the line and it'll be picked up inside the line. The kick there by McMahon down there again is smothered. And there'll be a throw in after 14 and a half minutes of the quarter. And the margin, south by one goal. Throw in. Buchanan waits for it to spit out. It doesn't come in her direction. Players tired. Lactic acid build up. They would be stuffed. What a game. Six points the difference. Coming up to the 15-minute mark of 17. Norwood down, but have the ball in attack. Not for long, with the ball's kicked out of bounds on the kick. fall. No, it's a free kick. Yep. Last touch. Last touch, Norwood chance. Repeating. If scores are level, it's five minutes each way. And the kick to be taken by Leah Cutting. I'll give you the tip. In the gloom at the Peter Motley Oval. Leah Cutting. 40 out. Kicks towards full forward off hands. Hollick, Hollick. Couldn't quite pick it up. It's pushed through for a behind, I think. We'll have to wait for the. Yes, it is. It's a behind. So that could, it could be another chapter. It. 
another chapter. We have a minute and a half left. There'll be no draw. Norwood a 4 one South of 4 6 30. We have a minute and 20 seconds remaining in the grand final. South lead. And the short pass is on. And the mark is taken by Molly McKendrick, who is told by all and sundry. And the coach down there, Chrissy Steen, says, cool it, cool it, cool it. Kick, oh, over the top, jump, can't mark. Hits the deck, rolls towards the boundary line and goes over. And we've hit Kick. 16. It's a last possession, so Norwood can go forward again through Ian Bush. This is the last chance for Norwood. He's got to roll and go. Five points the margin. South lead. Oops. She kicks through a nest of Norwood players, and one of them taking the mark is Benson over the top towards the half forward line. Hollick, who's been superb. Hollick, short pass, bounces in towards full forward. Almost siren time, five points the difference. Kick will be taken now by in defence Harvey. 30 seconds left. Harvey belts the ball long. It's all Norwood at centre wing. They've got 20 seconds to win the final. Short pass comes back there from Campbell. Got a roll Campbell and go. Centre wing. You can't go back. Millard's taking the ball. South lead by five points with 15 seconds to go. Meter Ridge. There'll be a kick taken. It'll be Millard, but the siren's going to sound. Millard at 55, can't kick it that far. South lead by five points. Millard kicks, South win. Siren sounds. Panthers win the grand final by five points. 4 6 30 to Norwood. 4 1 25. Let's hear it for South Adelaide. What a stirring game. The scores might not have been large as far as goals kicked by both sides, but the game had absolutely everything. Exhausted athletes now. Those that have won are so thrilled. Why wouldn't they be? Uh, new kids on the block. They had recruits from all and sundry. A lot of Norwood players, ex-Norwood players, but South, the best team in the competition right throughout the year finishing with a 9-1 record and Norwood crept into the top three 5-5 from 10 and the side that wins the flag are the side that's been the dominant team right throughout but they got a heck of a fright let's give congratulations to South Adelaide they are the champions but for Norwood beaten but far from disgraced in what you wanted to see Robbie Neal an epic grand final that where did that game come from <laughs> that was unbelievable what a contest it was it was enthralling Nord took their chances when they were able to get it forward they're able to to you know to execute but uh well done to south adelaide the one loss uh against the the roosters during the season and uh but congratulations to chrissy and to steve as well for for getting uh the girls up and going today that was absolutely fantastic and the crowd their involvement in the game while she was something that I haven't experienced certainly and not in, in women's footy uh, and this game had absolutely everything and uh, a fantastic showcase for what was been a fantastic sample W season. Yes when uh, we walked into the ground I came in early today to sit down and watch uh, football that was on before this game but I was really looking forward to what might happen because you had a team that just were never going to lose throughout the year they were so strong and they had so much potency. Now I can see the ground from where I am uh, and I can see someone down there with a microphone because I kid you what, it is very, very dark. You're not helping me it's at Neil all. It's Neil Sharp. Well, Thanks, Robbie. <laughs> so Even I can figure out Sharpie. Yeah, thanks, Neil, Mark. I've got to tell you, mate, it's, uh, it's pretty gloomy. Uh, that was some sort of an epic congratulations. Yeah, no, it was a very gutsy win in the end. The girls just toughed it out, which was fantastic credit to them. And uh, various stages throughout the game, it looked like you could get ahead, but uh, inaccuracy meant Norwood still around. And when Norwood got that goal just before half time, it did seem as if there was a bit of a change out there. Yeah, Norwood just just kept hanging in, hanging in, and made it tough for our girls. And I think I'm not sure what the inside 50 count was, but I'm sure we dominated it. But they just capitalised on a few of our mistakes, 
and, and kick goals when, you know, we had plenty of chances to do that previously. Sharpie, Robbie here, mate. And what has it done for, for your footy club's business down there, actually having uh, a Sample W team uh, this year, but also a very successful underage program, both with the boys and girls? And, and I can see even in your, in your league team, so many young kids from the southern suburbs are getting the opportunity to play league footy. What has the, the Sample W team done for, for your business at South Adelaide and for the footy club? Well, it's been enormous for us. I mean, just to have so many new people come into our footy club, you know, new people here again today you know the girls can see the pathway and and i'm sure at the end of this season we're going to lose a couple to brighter and better things so it's been you know credit to the southern football league great southern football league you've got behind uh, female football in, in our region and it's only going to get bigger and, and you know we've been fortunate that we've had so many good girls come through our underage and just speaking about your underage girls uh, you know montana mckinnon and, and nikki gore who's a, is an afl uh, academy member um as well um how hard do those girls work? Obviously, you would have been out on the track and, and you watch Chrissy put the girls through. And I know they've got to run. I think they ran about nine k's last week in preparation for, for this game, given they had the two-and-a-half-week break. Yep. Now, how hard do these girls work in comparison uh, to the boys that you watch under the tutelage of, of Mark Clayton and Tony Bamford uh, previously? Well, these girls, you know, work as hard as, as the guys, I reckon, in many respects. Certainly the hours these girls have put in, you know, their pre-season for a 10-match you know, program has been as long as what our, boy, our male team's put in and, you know, even with our under-18. So these girls have put in an outstanding commitment and next for no reward, although there might be some debate after today, there is some reward at the end of it. So that's a discussion that we'll, we'll have to have. But, you know, their efforts over the last, what, five or six months have been outstanding. Neil, it's Peter Walsh again. Tell us about the last few minutes in your life, the last few minutes of that game. <laughs> I just thought... Oh, you get a bit cynical when you're in football a little while, Peter. I just thought, just don't make it something silly that costs you the game, I reckon. That was what was going through my mind. And we almost did, but we just found a way. The girls in the back line just found a way to hang on. And, you know, a couple of clearing kicks from our into the forward line where you knew there was no one there. You're sort of gripping your teeth saying, oh, God, you know, don't come back with interest. And a sense of relief when the siren sounds, is that oh, what you call it? Oh, I think so. I think, and... The fact that these girls have worked so hard, you know what they've put in, that you know they can be pleased with, with the result at the end, and you know they're wrapped. Well spoken. Thanks, uh, and I really say this with sincerity: the uh, the performance of South off the field with Jonathan, who's headed the troops by his communicative skills with us working uh, for all the women's games, and to all of you there, we love visiting the Hickenbotham Stadium. You've made us feel very welcome, and. Electrical and the communications, national pharmacies and sponsors of the, of, with Fleurio Milk as well. We love going down there and congratulations to the club, not just for winning the flag, but for looking after us so much. No worries. Thanks very much, Peter. Thanks, Robbie. Thanks, Sharpie. I think we've got Adam Kelly about to address everyone now with the, uh, the post-match presentation. Well, let's see uh, what we have to well, say. What a wonderful game and what a fitting way to end the statewide Super Sample Women's League season. We now make presentation to the best on ground medal and to present the medal, the Honourable Corey Wingard MP, Minister for Recreation, Sport and Racing. The player judge best on ground today from the South Adelaide Football Club, Cheyenne Hammond. <laughs> oh, she was fantastic <laughs> and all season. We now invite the captain of the North Football Club, Rick McMahon, 
Um, firstly, uh, South Adelaide Footy Club, you set the benchmark early. This season, we knew today we had to give absolutely everything we had, and I think we did that with extra coping as well. Um, we threw everything at you, and in particular in the second half, and credit to you guys. You stuck to your guns, and Chrissy um, left. Lauren, you guys have led the way, so congratulations. Enjoy.
in South Adelaide. I'd just now like to call on one of the actors, you can nominate whichever, um, it's pretty hard to say a few words on behalf of South Adelaide. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone for coming. Um, like Ben mentioned, the crowd today was unbelievable. I don't think I've ever played in any game before, and that's had that such an offensive um, all the way through. Um, I'd definitely like to thank uh, Statewide Super um, and the Senate for giving us the opportunity to play. And I don't think um, you guys realise how much it actually means to all of us to give them the opportunity to play this um, competition. I don't think you'll ever understand it. Um, to the more you guys played out in the city today, um, all you, you can grow, you can be building, um, and yeah, absolutely unbelievable. And um, I'm proud to play against you guys today. Um, to our South Adelaide supporters that travel every single week with us from Wollonga to West Adelaide on 6 pm every single day, um, you guys are unbelievable. I've never been supported like that by you know, in people that are in the club and that are just talking about the team. Um, I'd like to thank our major sponsors, Foods University, Resource Go, um, Red Art, and Southern Volkswagen. Um, and <laughs> to uh, my team. We started in October and there was girls that had never been before. Um, there was girls that had maybe played two games and then there was girls that had played maybe a hundred or more. Um, you guys worked so hard and I've never been so proud to be involved in the club. Um, and it's sad that they were taking us in and backing us all the way. Um, the support was incredible and I don't think I would have found that another club. So, to the girls, every single person, every single trainer, every single volunteer that spent four or five times a week with us, looking after us. Thank you so much, and to everyone out there, I'm so, so proud of you. Thank you.
I reckon you've heard just about enough. And for South Adelaide, they will be singing merrily. They might be out of tune, but they'll be rocking and rolling at the Hickerbotham Stadium down the longer way because the Premiers are South Adelaide. 4.630 to Norwood, 4.125. It's as succinctly as you have done all day, Robbie. In 10 or 15 seconds, tell us about today. Well, I think it was... The wood were fantastic, and I think they adhered exactly to what Steve would have wanted the girls to do and, and take the game deep and just their tackling pressure, not let South get on the outside. Um, and hence it, it, it turned into the contest that it did, and it just picked up momentum, didn't it, in the second half until it just got to its its boiling point right in the last minute uh, and took us right through to you know, the 17 minute mark of the last quarter it was outstanding and South Adelaide were able to take their second piece of silverware for their yep. cabinet for the season including fast footy yes, well, she, so, <laughs> fantastic so uh, yeah you know Sharpie just has to make a little bit more room for another bit of silverware tonight and yep. uh, hopefully uh, they'll be able to get uh, a little bit more in their men's program um, in you know I think it was the last premiership 64 too, so too long ago too long ago so uh, uh, you know, the, the challenge is there for the men's to uh, be able to, to reciprocate the favour. Let's wrap it up now from the Peter Motley Oval. My thanks to, uh, for a start, people like Paul Chadwick and people like Scott Fisher and all the cameramen who work so diligently at their trade right throughout a very busy season that started back in February. To the other commentators and the other experts who decided this was a challenge they'd like to undertake and they did it superbly. We've enjoyed presenting it to you. We hope you've enjoyed what we've had to deliver. South Adelaide 4-6-30. They're the Premiers. They defeated Norwood 4-1-25. The Panthers by five points. From the Peter Motley Oval, Peter Walsh saying good night. <laughs>